Hello, it's Mafia Recap speaking. Today, I will be giving a rundown of the movie The Shawshank Redemption, which was released in 1994. Please note that there will be spoilers in my review. Without further ado, let's dive into the film. Andy Dufresne, a main banker, gets sentenced to consecutive life terms in Shawshank prison for allegedly murdering his wife and her lover in 1947. Despite claiming innocence, Andy's demeanor makes others believe he's guilty. Meanwhile, Ellis Boyd Redding, or Red, is denied parole after 20 years in Shawshank for murder. Unfazed, Red is known as the prison smuggler. When new inmates arrive, Red bets on who'll crack first, putting a large wager on Andy. On the first night, a new inmate nicknamed Fat Ass has a breakdown, losing the bet to Haywood. Guard Hadley viciously beats him for not staying quiet. The next day, they discover Fat Ass died due to the absent doctor. Andy asks Haywood for the man's name, but Haywood declines. Andy, after a month, requests a rock hammer for his hobby from Red. Red cautions about some inmates but agrees. They share a mutual fondness. While Red initially thinks Andy might escape, they both chuckle when they see the hammer's size, dismissing the idea. For the initial two years, Andy works in the prison laundry and deals with challenges from fellow inmates. He faces difficult situations but keeps quiet about them. Red arranges for Andy and friends to tar a prison facility roof, a welcome break from routine. While working, Andy hears Hadley complain about inheritance taxes. Using his banking knowledge, Andy suggests a legal way for Hadley to avoid them. In return, he asks for cold beers for the workers. Hadley initially threatens Andy, but eventually agrees. Some suspect Andy's motives, but Red thinks he just wants to feel normal again. While watching a movie, Andy asks Red for a surprising request, a Rita Hayworth poster. Red is taken aback but agrees to help. On his way back, Andy encounters the sisters again. He avoids assault, but is brutally beaten. Boggs, the leader, is punished with solitary confinement. When he returns, he's brutally attacked by Hadley's men. This leaves him permanently injured, and he's sent to a prison hospital. The sisters never bother Andy again. After recovering, and he finds a pile of rocks and a Rita Hayworth poster in his cell, gifts from Red and his friends. Warden Norton conducts a surprise cell inspection after learning of Andy's help to Hadley. They discuss their favorite Bible verses, and the warden encourages Andy to keep reading, saying, salvation lies within. He almost forgets to return Andy's Bible. Andy's relocation to the jail library alongside elderly inmate Brooks Hatland becomes evident when a guard seeks his financial advice. Andy sets up a makeshift desk, offering guidance to guards on financial matters and aiding them with tax filings. He starts seeking funding to improve the library, writing weekly letters to the main state senate. His financial advice gains popularity, extending to guards from other jails during inter-prison baseball games. He even handles the warden's tax returns. Brooks reaches a breaking point, threatening Haywood to avoid parole, but Andy intervenes and calms him down. Red empathizes with Brooks, recognizing how institutionalized he's become after 50 years in Shawshank. The walls, Red notes, have a strange effect, one starts by hating them, then gets accustomed, and eventually becomes dependent on them. Despite being granted parole and placed in a halfway home with a job at a grocery store, Brooks struggles to adapt. Tragically, he takes his own life, leaving the message Brooks was here etched on a wooden beam. After six years of relentless letter writing, Andy finally receives $200 from the state for the library, along with a collection of ancient books and phonograph records. Unfazed by the meager offering, he continues his campaign. Andy stumbles upon Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro in the Warden's Gifts. He seizes the opportunity, playing it over the prison's PA system, captivating everyone with a sense of momentary freedom. Norton is infuriated, demanding Andy to turn it off. Instead, Andy amplifies the volume. He's promptly sent to solitary for two weeks. When he's released, he reflects that it was the easiest time he's had in the whole, finding solace in Mozart. Red, however, dismisses hope as perilous in Shawshank, advocating for acceptance. The conversation turns tense, with Andy hinting at the fate of Brooks, causing Red to storm out. After 30 years in prison, Red faces his parole hearing once again, though with less enthusiasm. Unfortunately, his parole is denied once more. Andy marks Red's 30th year with a harmonica, and in return, Red gifts Andy a large poster of Marilyn Monroe for his 10th year. Four years after the Mozart incident, the state senate finally realizes they can't simply get rid of Andy with a check. 
they allocate a $500 budget per year for his library. And he leverages this, partnering with reading clubs and charities to create the best prison library in the state, named after Brooks. He also begins mentoring inmates to earn their high school diplomas, providing them with better prospects upon release. Meanwhile, Warden Norton exploits Andy's skills to run a scheme where prisoners work on public projects, securing contracts by outbidding competitors. Occasionally, he lets other contractors take jobs for the right bribe. Andy cleverly launders the money under the alias Randall Stevens, a fictional persona with fabricated documents. If investigated, they'll find a man who exists only on paper. Andy shares this scheme with Red, reflecting that he had to go to prison to learn how to be a crook. Tommy, a youthful inmate, joined Shawshank for burglary in 1965. He's amiable, popular, and bonds with Andy and Red. Discovering Tommy's troubled history of repeat offenses, Andy encourages him to explore a different path. Tommy's inspired and asks Andy to help him earn his high school equivalency. Though he crumples the exam in frustration, Andy mails it in any way. Tommy becomes curious about Andy's case, leading Red to share the story. Upon hearing it, Tommy seems visibly affected. He then reveals a shocking tale about a former cellmate who confessed to a double murder at a country club, implicating an innocent banker. Armed with this revelation, Andy approaches the warden, anticipating support in securing a retrial with Tommy's testimony. To Andy's shock, Norton reacts harshly. Andy boldly asserts he'd never expose Norton's money laundering operations, leading to his month-long sentence in solitary. Inmates are astonished, as this is an unusually severe punishment. Doubts about Andy's guilt arise, given his long incarceration for a crime he may not have committed. Meanwhile, Tommy succeeds in his exam, earning a high school diploma. The news is relayed to Andy in solitary, bringing a smile to his face. Later, Tommy is taken outside for a private meeting with the warden at night. Norton probes him about the story he shared with Andy and his willingness to testify. Tommy readily agrees. The warden smirks, then signals Hadley to shoot him. During a visit to Andy in isolation, the warden claims Tommy tried to escape and was shot by Hadley. Andy doubts this story and declares he won't cooperate anymore. The warden threatens to shut down the library, burn the books, and relocate Andy to a dangerous part of the prison if he refuses. He then orders another month in solitary for Andy to reconsider. Once released, Andy confides in Red about his deep love for his late wife and the guilt he carries, even though he didn't directly cause her death. He shares his dream of living in Zihuatanejo, Mexico, running a hotel. Andy invites Red to join him, but Red, feeling too institutionalized, declines. He warns Andy about the dangers of hope in their situation. Andy accepts this and asks if Red knows about Buxton, Maine. As Andy shares details about a hay field with a hidden item, he asks Red to promise to retrieve it someday. Red agrees but worries about Andy's state of mind. Andy's request for a rope amplifies Red's concerns. That night, Andy is tasked with tending to the warden's belongings. When the lights go out, it becomes the longest night for Red. In the morning, Andy doesn't respond to the call, and he's not in his cell. Red, along with the guards, is alarmed. Norton notices Andy's absence too. Red is brought in, and he genuinely doesn't know Andy's plan. Norton, growing increasingly agitated, discovers Andy's escape tunnel behind a poster. In a series of flashbacks, Red recounts Andy's ingenious escape plan. After discovering his rock hammer could dig through the wall, Andy concealed the hole with a Rita Hayworth poster. Over the years, he excavated at night, disposing of dirt during his morning walks. When Tommy died, Andy saw his chance. That night, amid a thunderstorm, he carried out Norton's clothes and escaped through the tunnel, reaching a sewer main. With precise timing, he ruptured it, emerging in a creek beyond the walls. His discarded jail clothing, soap, and worn-out rock hammer were later found by a search team. Andy methodically retrieves Norton's hidden money from various banks, exposing the warden's corrupt dealings. He mails evidence to the press, triggering a storm of police and media at Shawshank. Hadley is arrested for Tommy's murder, and Norton, facing imminent arrest, discovers Andy's message in the Bible. In his final moments, Norton contemplates how Andy outsmarted him before taking his own life. Red receives a postcard from Fort Hancock, Texas, with no message, which he takes as a sign of Andy's successful escape to Mexico. While Red and his friends share stories of Andy's exploits, Red grapples with the pain of missing his friend. In 1967, at Red's parole hearing, he candidly critiques the term rehabilitated, expressing deep regret for his past actions. 
He acknowledges the weight of his mistakes and requests to be left alone. His parole is granted, and he follows in Brooks's footsteps, seeing his message etched into a beam. Passing by a pawn shop, he's drawn to the compasses rather than the guns, a symbol of his newfound direction in life, chosen in honor of his promise to Andy. Red heeds Andy's advice, embarking on a journey to Buxton. True to Andy's words, he discovers the stone wall and the significant black stone beneath. Inside the small box lies a substantial amount of money and a message urging Red to join him in Zihuatanejo, though Andy refrains from naming the city directly. And he also indicates the need for someone with resourcefulness for a special project. Overwhelmed with hope and joy, Red grasps the profound impact of this message. Setting aside his parole, Red leaves the halfway home, confident that no one will expend significant effort searching for an old crook like him. He takes a bus to Fort Hancock and crosses into Mexico. Eventually, the two friends reunite on a beach along the Pacific coast, fulfilling Andy's long-held vision. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon. Take care.